Okay, so let us uh, start looking at this ARMAX model. Well, one thing I want to emphasize before I proceed is uh, you have to solve problems which I have given you. You have to start solving them yourself or with help of your friends. Come for the tutorial sessions. If you do not solve problems, there is no point in attending to these lectures. You will not understand anything. Okay. It will all become Greek and Latin beyond a certain point. Okay. It is it's like uh, without solving problem, attending these lectures is like uh, learning swimming by theory. You have to jump into water, you have to solve problems. Otherwise, the concepts will not become clear. It's extremely important that you solve problems. I am waiting. Actually, for this course, rather than just the hand problems, it is important to do simulations and programming. Because this is an advanced course and everything cannot be done by hand. Very, very simple things can be done by hand. Okay. So, I am just waiting to cover up to certain points so that I can start giving you programming assignments. Okay. And to be uh, very frank, even though I might decide to give 20 or 25 percent weightage to the programming, real learning will happen if you do programming parts seriously. Okay. So, that is more important than handwritten, uh, you know, exams in which I cannot ask more than 2 by 2 matrices or 3 by 3 you know some simple uh, systems which you can work with in uh, uh, 3 hours or 1 hour or whatever is set for the exam. But uh, if you do the project seriously what I am trying to do is trying to t pick up 7 or 8 different systems and uh, ask you to simulate those systems. I will give you differential equations for those systems. Uh, with all the parameters with uh, with a sample program as to how to simulate stochastic process, how to simulate noise so that you can uh, look at my program and develop your programs. Okay? Uh, and then uh, the, when you start working with uh, MATLAB programs and real data, you will get much better understanding than what you can get just by listening to the lectures. So, this is only one part, listening to the lectures, looking at the notes is only one part. That is uh, one, one thing. The second thing is that please uh, uh, upload my uh, or please download my uh, uh, latest notes. I have revised them, uh, then uh, I have rearranged them, revised them. So, some, some definitions I have changed. In the literature, there is uh, you know, different people seem to use different de definitions for um, covariance, autocovariance. Some some books, pre you know, prefer one by n minus one. Some books, one by n, and so on. So it's important that uh, we follow one, stick to one particular uh, notation, and use that. Okay. So we were looking at this. Uh, we are looking at this model which is RMAX model, ARMAX model and then uh, I said the trouble here is that uh, I do not know E, I only know Y and U. Okay? So, this C1, C2 and E, sequence E is not known and that is a trouble when you want to estimate the model parameters. So, my aim in the next few uh, minutes or next uh, in the next few slides is to show you that how can I do some algebraic manipulation so that I can do calculations only with y and u. I somehow try to eliminate I somehow try to eliminate these variables here e k minus 1 and e k minus 2. These two variables I want to eliminate. Okay? Doing some algebra and then algebra I am going to do. Okay. Why? Because we have developed ARX model. In ARX model, we had this term EK appearing. If only EK appears in my equation, I do not have so much problem. Okay. I am able to manage uh, doing calculations. But, yeah? Yeah. It is a colored noise. No? Yeah. So, we have seen yesterday in the exercises that uh, wk uh, plus wk minus 1 together gives us a colored noise because 
uh, auto covariance 1 is not 0 ok. So, for this particular moving average process you know auto covariance will be I have actually there is an exercise problem if you check for this kind of a process C1, C2 ok. I think problem number 8 or something I, I do not remember now uh, who you were asking yesterday problem number 5 just look at that problem ok. So, this is a colored noise this is a colored noise, but uh, so I want to do algebraic manipulation. So, algebraic manipulations just keep this global uh, picture in mind that somehow I want to do an algebraic manipulation and I want to transform this equation such that it has only y u and only e k I do not like e k minus 1 e k minus 2 ok. So, I am going to do this algebraic manipulation and uh, that is why I am doing some preparation for that. So, uh, well how do I uh, estimate the model parameters I am still want to use optimization ok. I do not know a 1 a 2 b 1 b 2 and c 1 c 2 6 parameters I still want to use optimization, but uh, I somehow want to eliminate right now for purpose of calculations to set up the optimization problem I need a transformed equation which only has uh, you know uh, which will have all 6 parameters parameters will not vanish, but only y and u will be there in my equation. So, that uh, you know my computations become because only y and u, u is the known signal e k is not a measured real signal ok e k is not a measured real signal. So, the first yeah. It is contained in y k. Why it is? Yeah, but I I want to separate the effects of deterministic contribution to y, okay, and disturbance contribution to y. So this this is here. This is contribution to y coming from known inputs. U is a known input, manipulated variable. Okay, this is this is model for. Uh, contribution to y which is coming from unknown sources ok. I want to separate them ok. I want to separate them. I want to separate them because it will help me afterwards to design a controller which can reject disturbances. See what is the aim of control uh, con uh, controller design? Aim of controller design aim of controller design A is to you know take the system from one state to other state. I want to you know my temperature inside a reactor is some 300 I want to take it to 350 set point change ok or tracking or I am flying at you know some altitude of 20,000 feet I want to take it to 25,000 feet ok. So, uh, th that is my you know tracking problem. Other problem is disturbance rejection ok is disturbance rejection. So, H inverse the when you inverse ok zeros will become poles and poles will become zeros right you understand that is why we need uh, that is why we need invertibility of the ok. I uh, will just give you a, 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 a example here uh, this is an example of ARMA process ok. For this particular process the pole and the 0 there is one pole and one 0 both of them are inside unit circle ok both of them are inside unit circle. And if you do H inverse yesterday I showed you how to do long division and actually there is an exercise in the in the exercises that I have given you there is an exercise in which you should do long division by hand and actually check how do you express ok. So, I have talked about FIR model then going from you know AR to moving average and so on. So, you should do those exercises then you will realize. 
so <coughs> what you can see here is that if the poles are inside the unit circle and zeros are inside the unit circle this coefficients here will go on diminishing in you know as k increases okay so which means in this series actually you can truncate because after some time the coefficients will become negligible they will become close to zero and then you can take a finite you can take a finite approximation okay but you will need large number of terms depending upon how the poles and zeros are you will need large number of terms so actually this this inverse okay uh see i i had told you somebody had asked me why go for arma model why not use ar or ma model the reason is somewhat hidden here okay you will need less number of parameters for an arma model than either one of them arma or ar because if you expand this as a series and then truncate okay then you will need more number of coefficients to get the same effect which this is giving okay so that's why that's why we normally use this is a highly parameterized form than than the series expansion okay it's more convenient to work with this parameterized form as far as number of parameters is concerned it's easier to work with this form than <coughs> okay uh and then this this will happen that you can truncate only if the poles and zeros both are inside the unit circle okay inverse this truncation either way okay is possible only pole and zeros are inside the unit circle if they are not inside the unit circle then uh, in one direction it might grow and then you have problem okay uh okay so now let's go to what is called as one step prediction this is the critical thing when you come to uh, identifying model from data let's keep the global aim in into, into the mind i want to somehow eliminate ek minus 1 ek minus 2 ek minus 3 whatever appears i am only comfortable with ek yk and uk past yk appears in my predictions no problem past uk appears in my prediction no problem only just ek appears not a problem i have trouble with all ek in the past because i do not know them okay so uh so what we are going to do is uh okay so uh so suppose you have observed vk up to time uh t which is equal to k minus 1 and then you want to predict vk based on measurements of vk up to time k minus 1 okay so uh let's write vk as let's say i have done this long division i have done this long division and then i have expressed this as you know uh, summation of i have just explained this in the previous slide if you have the slide with you you can check that so uh see i am going to split this into two components this summation ek and everything that is in the past i don't like ek minus 1 ek minus 2 so i have summed up here i have summed up here 1 to infinity okay in practice there will not be infinity in 1 to some capital n into the past okay so <coughs> this component this component i am going to call as the conditional expectation of vk based on see there are two components at instant k there are two components something coming from the past this is coming from the past okay and this is see always remember one thing time k is the current time instant k plus 1 is the next one k minus 1 is the past okay so so vk okay is a random variable okay uh it has some part which is coming from the past history okay and something is going to happen now instantaneously okay now before this ek happens before this ek happens can you give me a guess of what is the best guess for vk how will you find out see suppose suppose you happen to know all this past ek suppose 
for the time being. You happen to know all past TK. Okay, but you do not know. You do not know the current EK. What is the best guess for EK? EK is a zero mean random variable. The zero mean random variable. What is the best guess? Mean zero. Okay. So I am going to call this part. I am going to call this part as the conditional mean. That is conditional expectation. What is the best that you can expect? Okay, value of EK that you know the next. Next, the ek that is going to come now is zero, okay. And see this part, this part is coming from the past. It is not going to change now. Whatever has happened in the past has happened, okay. The the random variable which is going to occur now, okay. I assume that the best guess for it is zero, okay. So in that case, we split this ek into two parts. Uh, you know, this v hat k. We had k given k minus one. This notation we are going to use from now on throughout. K given k minus one, k given k minus three, and so on. So this means uh, estimate of the way you should read this is that estimate hat is an estimate. Estimate of v stochastic process v at instant k using measurements up to instant k minus one. Using measurements up to the previous instant, okay. That's what is. Uh, so now I can I can just do an algebra and show that this is nothing but h q minus one, because what is v? V is h q into e, okay. And I am just doing the algebra here, okay. And I am writing this as. Uh, just just see whether you are comfortable with this algebra. I am just doing this algebra. Okay, is everyone with me on this? What is ek? Ek is, you know, you can write ek as h uh, one upon h into vk. Okay, that's what I have done. Going from here to here, I have written ek as vk upon h q. Okay, vk upon h q. Yeah. It's conditional expectation. Uh, oh, it is not an estimate, so hat should not be there. Uh, well, there is a subtle difference. I agree with you. Hat will appear when you start doing computations. Right now, it is just the conditional expectation. You have a point. Okay, you get what I'm saying? You have a point. Right now, right now we are. Uh, uh, So right now, this hat should not be here. Yeah. So this slide, if I start correcting now, it will take some time. Uh, read it without hat. Mentally remove hat here. This is the true. This is the true. If you know the truth, then this is the true. Hat will come when you start doing computations using y and u. That time, hat will appear. Yeah. You take expectation, no? You take expectation of v. Now, what is expectation of B? Expectation of B is expectation of E plus expectation of this term, right? So, what is expectation of what is expectation of E? Zero. What will be expectation of this? See, now you have to be very careful when you take expectation because this is something in the past which has already happened. It is not going to change now. Okay. So you cannot take expectation operator inside and say expectation is equal to zero. Okay. Yeah, conditional expectation has non-zero value. Okay. So given something has happened up to, you will take conditional expectation on both sides. Yeah, you will take conditional expectations on both sides. Okay. So now let's go back to our model. I want to eliminate VK. I want to eliminate EK, uh, which is in the past. So I'm going to write a conditional expectation of YK. YK is conditional expectation of. Uh, so I'm taking here. You see this? I'm taking conditional expectation of YK now. 
Now, conditional expectation of yk is g q into uk times v k given k minus 1 that is conditional expectation of vk. Now, with the algebra which we have done earlier, we know that this, this can be uh, 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 uh. do you see this what I am doing now? Yeah. No, we are using up to k minus 1. Typically, there is always a unit delay between in any digital system there is always a unit delay between u and y. So, we are using uh, u in the past, we are not using current u. Okay. In real digital systems, it rarely would you will have a situation where you give an input and instantaneously y will get affected. Okay. In a physical system, I am talking about physical system. Okay. Now, do you see the algebra here? See, v is y minus g u. Okay, I am just substituting that here. So, I get this, uh, I get this, this expression here. Just see the algebra now. Okay. So, this conditional expectation uh, of y, okay, does not involve E right now. I have removed E effectively. Using H inverse, I have removed E. Okay. Using H inverse, I have removed E. The right hand side only contains u and u and y, huh? but u k is multiplied by this operator now g q, g q has always a delay of unit delay, okay. g q will always have a unit delay. See for a real system the delay between the input and the output is always minimum delay of 1 is there. Okay. So, current yk is affected by uk minus 1, it is not affected by uk. Okay. So, that that thing that u comes from the past is hidden in q, gq. Okay. Yeah. No, no, those have to be estimated. So, it is a chicken and egg problem, just wait, no, just wait to hear the full story. Okay. <laughs> just wait. So, I am just rearranging this and I am see what I have done here, I have just rearranged this equation and I have put it like this. Just do the algebra, if you if you are not comfortable, you can do it, I can wait for some time, you do it by hand. Just see whether you, you get the same expression which I got here, okay. Just start from this point and see whether you get this expression. Is, is the is the is the derivation correct? Okay. It is not. Why should it be expectation? The prediction, but it is conditional expectation. The prediction is actually conditional expectation. In stochastic term, how do you, how do you, uh, what is prediction? There is something unknown component for which you have to make a, make a guess. Then only you can do prediction, right? Huh? No, no, uh, no, no. Hat we have been using for estimate of the prediction. Okay. So the true conditional expectation will not have hat. Okay. Uh, so, very, very subtle difference, so, does not matter too much. Is, is everyone okay with this derivation? Is this clear? Huh? Okay. See, now I have to do, uh, let us look at one step ahead prediction here. Let us go back to our let us go back to ARX model. I am going back to ARX model. This is my ARX model. Okay. Let us look at what is what is GQ here? This is my GQ. Okay. This is my yeah. You just see here, even though UK is written here, because of Q minus 2, Q minus 3, 
you are never going to get uk you will get uk minus 2 uk minus 3 okay so uh, now uh, what is what is h inverse just go back and see what is h inverse what is what is this term what should be this term 1 minus h inverse okay so what is h here 1 by this what is h inverse 1 plus a1q okay so this is my h inverse minus 1 this is h inverse minus 1 okay so uh, for arx model for arx model one step ahead predictor okay turns out to have only past u and past is that all right just 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 be comfortable with this first is this okay just read carefully yeah you heard it out one one so it one step ahead no see from k minus 1 to k i am i am predicting value of k given information up to k minus 1 so it is one step ahead prediction one step in one step with reference to k minus 1 it is one step right see without knowing without knowing the measurement y k i am trying to guess what will be y k okay so what is the best estimate see you are going to get a measurement at instant k which is y k before that before it happens if i ask you to give me a guess what is the best guess and you have this model how will you create a guess this is how you will create that guess which one this one this one this one huh look at this equation look at this equation h inverse g what is h see okay let me let me just go move move here see this my model is yk everyone agrees with me yeah so this is my g and this is my h okay what is h inverse g is a by 1 into b by a a a cancels so this is equal to b okay what is 1 minus h inverse a minus 1 oh sorry 1 minus a 1 minus a huh? right so that is what I have done just go back and check <coughs> so this is this is this is g okay so this is nothing but h inverse g okay a a cancels in this case okay this is 1 minus h inverse okay so my what is my best estimate of y k using information available only up to k minus 1 that is that is this in this case you get y k minus 1 which is in the past which has happened you have the data okay at kth instant okay you are giving a prediction okay now the trick is to define ek as difference between yk and prediction of yk okay so the the nice thing about arx model is that the right hand side has only y and u 
and it is simple function of a1, a2, b1, b2. Moment I move to R max, you will have a very complex function of a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. Okay, there are two extra parameters c1, c2 there, and you will have trouble. Yeah. This is the best estimate. This is the conditional measure. Now, see what is the best estimate? Whether the mode is the best estimate or the mean is the best estimate, or there are so many questions are there, you know. But if you assume Gaussian distribution, okay, mean and mode and everything collapses to only one value, and mean is the best estimate. Conditional mean is the best estimate. We always assume Gaussian process. We work with mostly for simple modeling, we assume Gaussian process. Non Gaussian processes will assume for some uh, very complex problems. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, Gauss has created uh, a universe that is uh, unmatchable. And you know, many of us get bread and butter because of. Great work by Gauss. Okay, so let's look at uh, this uh, equation now, R max model. Okay, can you do it? Can you do this business yourself? And let's see whether what I've written here, you get the same thing. So you have to do H inverse G and one minus, and tell me what do you get. Okay, so I'll move to this. Okay, now. The only difference that you have is that you have a C here, you have a C here, okay. So when, so this is for ARX, okay. Now when you have a C here, for this case, you have to talk about H inverse G that will be A by C into B by A. So, A A cancels, you will get B by C. You will get B by C, right? What will you get for 1 minus H inverse? C minus C minus A. So, 1 minus H inverse is C minus A by A by C sorry by C you will get this right. So, what is the one step ahead predictor here? The one step ahead predictor here the one step ahead predictor here. See, this is this is my H inverse. This is my this is my H inverse G. Okay, this is one minus H inverse C minus C minus A by C. Okay, is this okay? What is what is nice about this equation? In this equation, on the right hand side, you only have Y and U. Okay. No, no, we are using a lower order model with less number of parameters. Less number of parameters means you need excitation for a small, smaller period of time, which means you are wasting product for a smaller period of time. So, your ex experimentation period to get the model is smaller, is cost effective. No, no, no. See, I am giving you toy examples. In real industrial systems, I have worked with some, I can show you some industrial data where you know you need uh, between one input and one output, okay. You need 40 parameters or 50 parameters, okay, which compresses to 4 or 6 parameters when you go to R max, okay. Where is 40 and where is 4 or 6? You know, it, it, it is that kind of a difference. 
ओके इन सम सेंस या या इट्स अ कंप्रेस्ड कंप्रेस्ड फॉर्म यस Yeah, exactly. If the current disturbance was zero, perfectly, a very nice interpretation. If current disturbance was zero, then the best estimate of, yeah, would have been this. That is another way of looking at it. If the current estimate happens to be zero, and why do we choose zero? Because it is a, we are actually modeling it as a zero mean white noise. Okay. Okay. So uh, I can convert this into a difference equation. Okay. I have transferred the problem of unknown E k to to this y hat. Okay. Uh, now, how am I going to deal with? So, my error here. Well, my error here is I have called it epsilon because it is an estimate of E k. It is not equal to E k. Estimate of E k. <coughs> okay, so uh, now uh, I have this, I have this, I have this one step predictor, I have this one step predictor, I can start using it in time, okay. I have, I have this data, I have this data which is u k given from k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I have this data, okay. Then, uh, to kick off my estimator, I need these values. I need these values of y hat. Initially, I can guess them equal to y naught. Okay, and then I will start using this difference equation. So, what is y three given to? What is y three given to? I'll use the difference equation and find out. See, I have made a guess that this value is nothing but equal to y zero. This value is nothing but equal to y naught. This is my guess. Okay. Uh, now, how do you do parameter estimation? You are given a guess, okay, of c1, c2, a1, a2, b1, b2, okay, and then you then you actually predict y, find out a difference, and minimize the sum of the square of errors. That's what you want to do finally, right? Minimize sum of the square of errors. So I am started using the difference equation in time. I am starting from time zero. So y3 epsilon 3 is given by this okay next i will find out y4 given 3 i will find y4 given 3 notice one thing here i have generated y3 given 2 it is used here it is used here okay now y5 given 4 i am using i am using this estimate and this estimate here okay so, given a guess of C1, C2, A1, A2, and B1, B2, and I have this data of U and Y, I can go on estimating these numbers Y hat 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, and so on, right? I can do this up to capital N. My data is some 1000 data points. I can do this. Yeah? Yeah? Huh. Only, only, uh, huh, here. Huh, because y appears no in my equation. See, y and see, there are two things here y hat appears and y appears. In this equation, consists of y, y hat, y hat is different from y. Y is the true measurement, y hat is the estimate. So, in this difference equation, y hat is appearing, y is appearing, okay. So, that is why in my equation here, my equation here y2, y1 is appearing, y3, y2 is appearing. But there is no problem, y is measured. Only trouble is, only trouble with, with this guy. 
see this has to be estimated here and then put here okay so uh, i can actually uh, okay this we can skip I have given an alternate way of predictions. Okay, so the, you can see this in the notes. Uh, there, is, there are two different ways of predictions. I have explained you one way of doing predictions. There is another way of doing predictions. Okay, so so now how do I estimate the parameters? I estimate the parameters such that sum of the square of errors is minimized over you know three to n sum over three to n. With respect to the six parameters a1, a2, b1, b2, we saw how to solve this problem using nonlinear optimization tools. Okay, I have to solve this problem using nonlinear optimization tools. There is no other go. Why? Why the problem comes? The problem comes because of this. The problem comes because y3 is estimated, which is which depends upon the guess c1, c2. Then this estimate gets multiplied by c1 again. You see that, or here, these two are estimates, previous estimates. They get multiplied by C1, C2. It's a non-linear in parameter problem. Okay, typically very difficult to solve. Not so easy to solve this problem. Okay, subject to this model equations, you have to solve this problem. Uh, so I have to solve this constraint optimization problem. That is. Epsilon k is computed using this this equation, and uh, you know it's very important to give a good initial guess and and so on. So it's not it's not a trivial solution to. Fortunately, there are toolboxes now available, and then you can make use of those toolboxes as control engineers, develop models, and uh, so I would just generalize what I have said. There is something called prediction error method. I have this model. I have this model. Uh, I have this model. Y k is equal to g. I have just. I am just saying that g has some parameters theta, okay, and h has some parameter. Entire parameter vector a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. I am calling it as theta, okay. And uh, I have this data of y k u k. Then what is the optimal prediction? We just derived this optimal prediction. Optimal prediction of y hat k given k minus one is given by h inverse. H inverse g into one minus H inverse y. Okay, then you find out this error. Okay, you find out this error, and then you minimize some of the square of errors. Okay, this this way of identifying models, the square estimation of the models. Okay, this is called as prediction error method. Why prediction error method? Because we explicitly construct predictions, and then Use that, minimize that. Okay, this is called a prediction error method, or in uh, system identification literature, this is popularly known as PEM. P E M. Okay, so uh, you are predicting. Note one thing: the predictor here. What is what is main thing about a predictor? Predictor doesn't have e in the past. Predictor only has y and u. Y and U are measured values, known values. So you can actually construct the some of the problems in the uh, tutorial sheet are given a second order model, construct a predictor, or given a first order model, construct a predictor. So you should actually work out those predictors and check how the predictors work out. Okay, the predictor equation becomes more complex for Box Jenkins model for uh, Uh, Armax is easier than Box Jenkins, okay, and it's even more difficult to identify Box Jenkins than Armax. So uh, let's come back to our old problem. Uh, we have to minimize this sum of the square of errors, uh, and if I do this using MATLAB toolbox, I get this uh, and the data that we have been looking at, one tank data, okay. I get these model parameters, and well, as I told you. This model consists of two things. One is a, b, c, the other polynomials that you get, 
and then E is a white noise whose mean is almost equal to 0, okay. Why it is not equal to 0? Because this is an estimate, okay. And yesterday I was telling you that, you know, uh, the estimate of a random number uh, might, which is, which has true mean 0, the estimate might come very, very close to 0. See here it is coming 10 to the power minus 3, very, very close to 0, okay. Uh, and its variance is this, lambda square. This is my model. Second order, this is this this is a convention of uh, MATLAB. That means there's a time delay of two. Order of a polynomial is two. Order of b polynomial is two. Order of c polynomial is two. That's what is two 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 two. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I get this uh, uh, R max model, uh, and uh, you know I, I should then check autocorrelations, cross correlations, all that business we should do. You can see that this is almost a white noise, E k is a white noise, you do not have to have higher order here. ARX model, we have to go to sixth order. Here, only using second order model, I am going to get a reasonably good model, okay. So, uh, uh, E k, if I put histogram of E k, looks like it is a Gaussian noise, the way it is distributed, the way the errors are distributed. Uh, if I compare different models, now, is something uh, this is this is simulation which is noise free i removed the noise component and compared how good are the three models i developed oe model arx model or max model all of them are giving almost similar predictions okay this is this is these predictions are using the noise model that's why it is just fitting okay these predictions are without the noise model that's why there is a difference because this gap is because of the noise okay so what is typically done, what is typically done in, in a real uh, exercise is that you take one data set, okay, you identify a model using the data set. You take another data set and see whether these models predict that data, okay, that is what I have done here, okay. So uh, you can visually see here that most of the variation in the data is explained by this model. So model is a good model, okay. Uh, for for that is called prediction. See, you are removing uncertainty and saying that what is the best prediction. So I talked about one step prediction. You can talk about two step prediction, three step predictions, five step predictions. You can talk about infinite horizon predictions. Actually, technically speaking, what I have plotted here is infinite horizon prediction. Not taking into account y at all. If I just know u, okay, see, go back here to this model. If I were to assume that only, only this part is there, okay, and I do not know anything about this, what is the best prediction? See, this prediction problem is always there, no? See, I want to know what is the best prediction of temperature after 15 days. If I develop this model for temperature variation in Bombay, I would like to predict, okay, and the models are bad, that is why you curse, uh, you know, newspapers or whatever, the weather department for, uh, but the problem is, you know, you have to develop GQ and HQ, okay. If your GQ is not so good, your predictions for next 15 days are not going to be good or there is one more thing which we do not realize that there are always unknown disturbances, okay, in the weather prediction, there will be always unknown disturbances. So those can upset your predictions, no? You say that day after tomorrow is going to be sunshine, but there is some disturbance somewhere and you know the clouds come in. So you have a problem. So best estimate of day after tomorrow's weather, okay, given, uh, you know, given this is 0, you can make using this model, okay. So just like I developed one step ahead prediction in the books on uh, this thing you will talk about multi-step predictions. Multi-step predictions we are going to use for control after some time. I will talk about predictive control where we will do p-step ahead predictions and k-step ahead predictions and all that. Then you know I have once I have this model I am using it for uh, doing all kinds of, uh, I, I want to see step response, I want to see impulse response and I can do all that. I want to see Nyquist plots of these models. 
so let me just summarize what are the steps in the model development. Given data, you have to first select the model structure, OE model, RMAX model, Box Jenkins model, whatever, ARX model, okay. Then you have to plan the experiments. Now planning of the experiments and selection of model structure are coupled. You must have realized that. If I am using ARX model, let me collect data for a longer time. If I intend to develop, you know, RMAX model, I can do a shorter experiment and so on. So your maths, understanding of maths is deeply related to where you plan your work, you know, where you, where you plan the experiments, very, very important. Uh, there are so many issues. I mean, we are just touching the tip of the iceberg. This is a very huge area. Do you do these excitations when the plant is in closed loop or in open loop? I mean, uh, there are a lot of debates. People are still working on closed loop excitations and so on. Uh, so moment you move to this closed loop experimentation, there are a lot of issues. The noise and uh, the input become correlated because your controller output is function of measurements, but measurements have noise. So the controller output becomes function of noise and then you have mess. You cannot estimate model parameters correctly. I have given one problem in the, just check what is the problem the, of my identifying a parameters if the plant is in closed loop, okay. There are problems. Um, and then you have to validate the model. Is the model good or bad? You have to take some independent data and see whether this model predicts that data, okay? All those things are required. Without that, you cannot really, uh, you know, do a, do a good job. Um, I think before I go to the, before I go to that, let me see whether I can demonstrate to you this toolbox, at least some part of it, we will probably visit it again. So this MATLAB has this toolbox developed by Professor Leung uh, and it has a very nice interface. I think Professor Bhartiya showed you how to use commands. This has a nice interface which, which makes even life more simple. Uh, Okay, so you probably would say that if it is all this simple a five minute job, why did you give so many lectures? You know, that's a good question. And uh, open session. This is the data which I have been showing you. This is the this is the data which is. So this is the, this is the perturbation data for the tank, two tanks in series, okay. Uh, level variation in the lower tank with respect to uh, uh, voltage given to the wall in the, uh, to the, to the control wall. Okay. This is the data we have been looking at. This is the level variation. These are the inputs. This kind of input is called as zero random binary input, two state input. Why only two states? Why not multiple states? Well, this has come, this is a historical baggage because of, uh, uh, you know, earlier probably through, uh, uh, you know, limited uh, digital hardware, it was possible to introduce perturbations which are only of two uh, levels. Okay. So there's nothing wrong in introducing multi-level signal. You can always introduce, but uh, we still keep using this. So PRBS, it's called PRBS is pseudo random binary input. Okay, why what? Why don't we give step input? Why don't we give? You know, there is a problem in the exercise sheet which tells you why you should not give just step input. You will have you will have difficulties in this matrix omega transpose omega. You will have you know column dependencies in this matrix omega transpose omega. So rank of the matrix omega transpose omega is deeply related to where you plan these experiments, okay. So remember that. Now how do I develop the model here? Well, I have taken this data, I just go here and say parametric model, what model you want, ARX model or okay, I will choose 
box Jenkins model okay um, I'll choose a box Jenkins model and just say default is okay just say estimate okay and it has done that okay this is my bj model this is my bj model okay i want to see how good is the model model predictions see this model prediction pretty good for box jenkins model okay uh, i want to i want to compare this with other models that i have developed okay i have developed here arx model 222 or max model uh, arx model 442 arx model uh, 662 or max model 222 i want to compare with this and then i want to compare with this okay all this optimization business which i have been telling you okay is solved like this in fraction of a second uh, inside the toolbox for simple systems of course and then you know you can see all kinds of plots you can see how good is the model prediction you can say well i want to see whether there is a autocorrelation of the residuals uh, where is this model residuals i want to check autocorrelations of the model residuals so this is this is for box jenkins and other models this is for the arx 222 model which is or oe model probably this is for the oe model uh, so oe model the noise is colored for box jenkins and armax the noise is white so the autocorrelation is within the band except at lag 0 lag 0 is one they are plotting everything other than lag 0 lag 0 is always one we saw that yesterday while doing calculations okay this is cross correlation this is a cross correlation so you can get all this plot just you know you want to see trans step response of the two models all the three models are compared okay so it just click of things provided you know uh, you want to compare body plots of all the three models okay so doing it is now not the problem you should know the theory and why you are doing it okay so for that you have to keep reading my notes go back to the references that i have given and slowly it will come in not not uh, instantaneously uh, i can see what are the poles and zeros of the model i can check uh, what is the noise spectrum you know what is the power spectrum so these are just clicks away you know you can just develop all kinds of models then you want to see the model parameters you know what was the box and jenkins model parameters so i just take this and drag it to workspace i go to matlab workspace and say who this is my bj2222 bj52 this is my model okay it gives me uh, a by b c by d lambda square mean everything calculated okay uh, what is this f ah so this look at this model no it is b by f and c by d notation is different notation is different okay i am calling b by a and c by d they are calling what b by f and c by c by d loss function is some of the square of errors fp is uh, fp is i'll come to that i'll come to fp session is created in ident uh, you can create in multiple ways you can load data directly so there are ways of loading data import data you can import existing models you can import you can say data from a file you can data from uh, you know you have to prepare data outside i'll i'll give you a program which will take the full tank model 
okay create simulation and create data file for ident then you load it into ident and then you can run your own sessions okay you do that actually we can have a session in the you know computer lab we have actually problem is our computer lab is now split and we are undergoing renovation so let me see if i can do a session next week so that you have real data and then you can play with the data you know you can see all these models being developed and actually i have talked about only bare minimum essential there are many models that you can develop using this you can develop arx uh output error model oe is output error armax model you know bj you know you can also develop state space models directly okay so you can uh decide to develop a fourth order a state space model okay and well it hasn't done a good job i think of the state space model is not working see ha huh? it's going to infinity so it hasn't been able to do a good job of state space model okay so you have some trouble uh with the state space model so maybe we should change the method we should go to prediction error method not enforce it and say estimate now i expect things to be better so now what we can do is we go to the ident interface we don't like this model so knock it off and go back and see uh things yeah this this model is good prediction error method is very good okay there is one more a uh, method of identifying models called as uh subspace identification method sometimes it gives trouble it's also a good method uh, i shouldn't uh, say bad things about subspace identification but it sometimes gives you not so great models pem is very very uh, stable uh, nice method okay and then uh, you can do other things i go to ident interface i want to see uh, okay you, you want to see how the state space model is developed you just go to workspace and ask matlab to see who i have pss4 this is the four state model see this is the state space model it has developed c matrix is this b matrix is this for what 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 we are calling in our notes as phi gamma c they are calling ab abc okay so you have data you can directly get a state space model in fact next thing i'm going to talk about is that if you identify these transfer function models how to convert into state space that is called a state realization so uh, you can directly get a state space model and then you can work develop controllers based on the state space model there is one more thing here which probably you should know i want to look at uh, comparing all kinds of properties of these models i take them to something called lti view lti view is linear time invariant system property viewer okay so uh you know let me take two different models let me take this oe model to lti view along with um and go back to lti view so what is it lti view bring into table yeah lti view is a wonderful tool you can plot configuration i want to have a plot configuration of this type and i want to look at nyquist plot comparison and step response comparison okay this is comparison of the nyquist plots of two models which i have estimated and a uh, comparison of uh you know step responses typically you want to look at frequency response and step response okay so well you can create all kinds of things here you can go and say plot configuration is 4 you like uh, impulse response also you also like bode plot let's say uh you can see all four phase angle will also come into picture and then so it's possible to it's possible to uh, no the tools are available all these tools are available very very advanced tools are available you should know what it means 
otherwise you will generate garbage okay you should know what is the stochastic process what is the colored noise what is the white noise what is really happening when you develop these models and why should i make choices and how do i make choices if you know those things you can develop models very very quickly okay and so you should know how do i inject a perturbation and all these things do become a piece of art beyond the point they are not really you have to know your maths you have to know understand it very very well uh so how do you select the model structure very very difficult job uh you know whether the process is running in continuous mode or it is running in a you know batch mode uh what is the time scale of operation so you cannot do this completely as a control engineer okay you have to have your you know mechanical engineering chemical engineering metallurgical engineering whatever it is whatever is your basic background that you have to use because to perturb a plant you should know what that plant is okay uh this is what i have heard is that some of the earlier failures of uh this light combat aircraft uh where because the control systems were not designed by aeronautical engineers they were designed by mechanical engineers who were control engineers but you have to know how the aircraft flies you know if i have to control a chemical plant i should know how a chemical reactor works i cannot just say you know i'll develop this time series models and then i'll control you can do it to some extent but you should also know the physics you cannot forget that okay so it's a complex thing so what kind of application it is you know it's it's uh you not need to know the system but it is not completely true you actually see how do you perturb what is the frequency range in you perturb so you should know what is the relevant frequency range okay see here i showed you this uh perturbation data right earlier i have shown you the perturb so this uh if i go here and if i look at this time plots okay i have chosen a certain frequency of excitation right i have done that knowing the process physics see if i had given too fast excitations then this y wouldn't have you know changed so much it has no time to change okay then we call it that that input is not sufficiently exciting the input is not sufficiently exciting okay then you cannot do good identification you will get a bad model okay so actually actually this is not truly black box in that sense when i chose this okay what should be the switching time between any two jumps i chose it carefully if i don't choose it carefully knowing the physics i land up into problem okay so black box is in quotes with a pinch of salt okay so okay 